Hello everyone, on my last video I talked about a zero fuel solar nomadic lifestyle plus homeschooling. And the car in question is the Aptera, which is just this awesome thing that can get 40 miles per day uh, from just solar. You basically never have to, you know, plug it in and power it from an outlet like Tesla cars. You just let it charge in the sun and every day you can get your average of 40 miles uh, of commuting distance. It's built for commuters, but it occurred to me uh, if you just you know got a couple of these things and took to the road, you could have a uh, nomadic lifestyle where you had zero cost for uh, your car once you bought it and you, zero cost for fuel and uh, zero cost for housing essentially if you live this way uh, each night which is uh, quite possible and you could see everything that is connected by road so pretty much uh, the United States and I'd probably take such a thing up to Canada even though uh, probably lower light up there and Central and South America is possible someday maybe you know all of, all of Eurasia but uh, for right now, I'm just thinking over the next, you know, five to ten years, a plan I might have. So that was an article I pushed out, and uh, now I'm working on the next article. Uh, that article was written in conversation with Bing, and Bing has a quota you use up every day. So when I use it up, I actually switch back to ChatGPT. I'll be doing it with Bard now. But the last time I tried copying and pasting this into Vim, uh, it crashed. So I'm going to do it in a couple of passes now. So there's probably other ways to go about it, but the 80-20 rule says just do it in a few passes. So I tend to do it in chunks like this. I go here. I do my keyboard shortcut for starting a new macro. I do a save, and then I do my first paste. And it does have my email address in there because of the way I copied it out of ChatGPT. Uh, but that's no big deal. I'll just cover that in the... Uh, editing, I'll probably do a macro to just work an extended select or something uh, with a search and replace inside of it. So many good things to show. And uh, I'll try and do it. And you can see I recorded when load failed. There were times when it just gave up. You were asking it to do stuff. And it's like, nope. So I capture that too. By doing this in chunks, and each time I do a chunk, I do a cut instead of copy. It's an easy way to remember uh, where I was, how far along I am. And this is one of the necessary evils of using uh, one of the longest running and versatile uh, text editors on Earth because of the way it works in these uh, Linux terminals. Uh, you don't always get 100% uh, copy-paste reliability. In fact, it could crash a Vim, so that's why I'm doing this in chunks, making you suffer through it a bit, but it's just about done. And when it's done, I'll format it and uh, push out an article. This is all interesting, good stuff to see. Uh, this text file, by the way, has been is one really long text file. It's a, a journal text file for life. It's my public journal text file for life. It's possible to keep a single uh, .txt or .md file, this is a markdown file, and have that one file just grow bigger your entire life as you add new stuff to the top with reverse chronological blog order, which is uh, what I'm doing here. So one of the first things I'll do is a shift V for extended select and then a control F for forward, push myself down to what I know is the bottom of the article I just pasted. You can tell it because of these big spaces and horizontal lines that come up. And now I can do colon S, so just search and replace within that highlight, slash my email address, and replace it as not at. That's why it's not highlighting. You should see this stuff highlight as you do it. You know you got it right because you see it highlight. And then you're going to replace that with, in this case, nothing global cc and that just replaced all my email addresses and that extended select so we can get to uh, better formatting so there's multiple space issues there's 
fancy macros you can do to do that, but I'm not going to do fancy macros. I'm just going to go and get rid of the extra spaces, which could actually be a good clue for where it switches from me talking uh, to chat GPT talking. But so what? I'll, uh, I'll eyeball that later. I'm going to separate the uh, cleaning up uh, type so that I know I'm sort of approaching this with a nice fresh eye. You can also see places where I'm going to have to put in some sort of uh, line formatting so that it doesn't uh, try and wrap it. There's a lot of things that are working like lists there and with Markdown it's really easy to do that kind of stuff so I will as my next step format everything that should uh, not line wrap when this gets converted to markdown on the web. See, there's another. You can tell those by being solid blocks, and I will keep those. So I jump to the top again, and I control F to go forward, and I look for my first occurrence. And then you have to decide whether doing just normal bullet points like that, or I like to do numbers. So this is, I could hardly even tell you my keyboard shortcuts I'm doing. As you can see, I'm talking while I'm doing this. So it's completely in muscle memory, this kind of formatting. Uh, in other text editors, they would show off the ability to um, edit multiple lines at once, making a big deal of it, like they invented it or something. But as you can see, uh, it's just a Vim thing, and for a very long time has been, and uh, you know, don't let them fool you, people. This is the this is an asset for life. You don't need to be beholden to uh, vendor provided text editors, which really have one purpose in life, which is to get you to spend money with that vendor. Don't have any uh, you know false beliefs that there's anything altruistic or free and open source spirited in VS Code. They're trying to make you long-term Microsoft customers. A uh, duh. So you can see I might screw up, but you know, between undo or just redoing it or whatever, it's really easy to to deal with that. Another thing going on here is these last lines are not really part of the bullet list off, and it's switching to the next topic, but the formatting of the copy paste is not smart enough to separate especially through chat gpt they're not preserved they're not making any attempt to preserve the markdown that they use in displaying things to you even some of that's being lost there are in fact uh, bolding commands and stuff that you know for bold text that were probably built into here uh, that i've lost during this copy paste out of the uh, web browser into simple note and into vim uh, I believe that to be the same case with bard bard which is Google's version of these chatbots I believe is not as also not preserving the good markdown it's really only uh, Bing who has been so courteous to its users as to go oh well we took the time to formatted as markdown and to create citations so when you copy paste uh, you can get uh, the citations uh, right along with the uh, the markdown and have a really good uh, quick web publishing process so here I can't use my macro in at a because oh, it's not there I've quit out all my old macros are gone uh, my experimental macros, not my regular ongoing macros. So you'll see me recording one. Our spirograph patterns orbit. So, well, I'm going to record with a Q key into uh, buffer A. So you can see I'm recording in insert mode, me colon, escape, uh, zero for first location, down, down with JJ, insert again. And now it's it's GPT chat, chat GPT, what do they call it? It's GPT chat. I guess right in the middle of a, uh, of a macro recording, I'll go over to chat.openai.com and get that language down. 
it's chat GPT and I'm gonna put the four after it because it's it's on four and I do like to kind of record that so I'm still in insert mode so chat GPT four colon space escape zero J and that's where I want to stop recording the macro so I find each place where it's me talking and I do the macro that's at a but after the first time I do that I can uh, just go at at for my favorite Star Wars geek trick and at at walks across your work can a pace ship can a spaceship well I'm gonna keep my spelling mistakes follow the path of that at at firstly secondly instead at at however another finally in short at at there to this end as they traveled to the natives but the tribe and so this tribe at at to this end as they to the natives but one planet but when they load failed you can see I, I try and get it to tell stories as long and continuous as it possibly can getting it interested in wanting to continue when the language model is its analogy or the analog to being intrigued when the analog of an intrigue of intrigue is occurring with a large language model it'll just go on forever to get some sense of conclusion and that's what happens here with these load fails I'm deliberately trying to get it into those modes where it'll kind of tell a story forever the nomadic on one such years passed as they approached but what surprise as they landed but as the tribe despite this as they prepared and thank you so much I really try and make sure it knows I appreciate it whenever it does that at a sometimes it forgets the last macro you did so at at stops working you have to do at a again The best step is to add another chat GPT. You're welcome. Okay, my best step. I mean, that's me saying my next step. So that's me. Chat GPT. And there are different and there are different time frames, certain overlapping stories. That's me again. So I'm kind of wrangling it back and forth. Propose a few parallel and occasionally intertwining storylines. And whenever it does this, this is just me retrying, right? Regenerate is me retrying, so I don't have to put any of that in there. Got it. These storylines could intertwine. Access it. Yeah. Drawbacks. Wow. Oh, that's one of these. Sometimes I break out a line that shouldn't be broken out. Drawbacks. <laughs> Potentially shorter. Retry. Certainly here are some benefits of nomadic lifestyle. I guess when it's retry, it's I should put stuff there, right? That's me. So there's a retry up here. could use one so I mean it's not a hundred percent but you know you put what time you can into the massaging of these things because it's of interest and the AIs are gonna find it again it's gonna create a feedback loop when you publish discussions with an AI they eventually come around and they, I don't know whether they're going to recognize their um, their own work what are the key differences between the nomadic humans and the nomadic robots wow such great stuff in here good sci-fi and again this story is about the uh, traveling around the outer rim of uh, the galactic plane taking advantage of you know 
uh, gravity slingshotting to keep to you know it's very parallel to my nomadic uh, you know solar lifestyle this is a nomadic galactic lifestyle I went from nomadic solar on the surface of earth to what could you do analogous to that in the galactic plane taking advantage of time dilation and you know the ability to save fuel to circumnavigate the galaxy on the outer rim making rotations around the outer rim of the galaxy such that each time back you can see the civilizations that were there when last on your last circuit you can either do Pansporia and like plant life and see how it comes along we could be that or you could just find and discover life and uh, watch it progress so it's kind of an archaeologist's uh, route overall now write a story and at one day as the meanwhile despite as doesn't this way of life sound like great fun uh, but sure the idea as they the nomads after several months as they parted ways that can't be uh But it has things for both. This is it again, right? Right after that. After a short question answer, right? After you ask, doesn't it sound like great fun? Chat GPT answers right away. And it just does it in one line. So I have to be alert to it going back to me on the next one. I wish this was in the copy paste. If I start giving feedback, it might be to uh, insert, you know, when you do these copy pastes, who it belonged to. And to copy paste the whole discussion at once. This is really... Uh, tedious in its current form to do this. What risks? And this is the end coming up. Write a story. And that's it. That's the end. So I save. And now I give it a headline. And this is really interesting because the idea is, you know, uh, galactic nomads time uh, galactic nomads circumnavigating outer rim of galactic plane Oh, time dilating, time dilating galactic nomads, circumnavigating, slingshotting around. <laughs> slingshot, make sure that slingshot on its own is a word. Slingshot, there we go. Make sure this is not okay. So I'm using a made up word because the single form, the non ing form, is fine. So that's it. Time dilating galactic nomads slingshotting around outer rim of galactic plane. A lot of geeks <laughs> will uh, relate to that once they see it. So I do a lot of gratuitous saves and now I do it with my ampersand P, which starts to do the publish. And we'll set up a before and after. This, uh, Skite Slice thing is my blog publishing system that takes that one very long text file and it breaks it up into a bunch of separate individual text files or markdown. So it goes from one long markdown file to lots of short markdown files. At current, I believe I am up to about 500 or so and you can see the count, it's 503. Here's the local file pass, which as you can see are uh, completely uh, disconnected from the URL that's going to be generated. It's just the date it was produced so that I can see it and the order in which they were produced. I'm, I'm really counting up from, uh, I guess, two. There was a number one, but I think the number one counts as the index file of the blog site itself. Not that I couldn't change these without doing any harm. I could because they uh, sort of get erased. Now, GitHub, uh, transmitting these files out to GitHub, everything in the underscore post directory, 
everything in underscore includes everything in my graphics directory and then here is the actual push those were git adds git add git add git add usually using asterisks there so it adds everything new under those three directories it gives me a lot of freedom adding pictures to my blog posts and, and includes it encourages me to make new include styles like the YouTube wrappers and now it's pushing out to github and I guess I'll go over to where you can see uh, I usually keep uh, this open for those purposes where you can see it going from uh, I don't have anything to do to oh new stuff has just been published and I'm working on it so you'll actually see a change it still thinks it has nothing to do because I just did the git push and my site is actually quite large so all this back-end stuff that monitors it from uh, github's standpoint just doesn't see the changes yet so this green is going to turn to orange it's just going to blink to orange right before our eyes it usually does it on its own sometimes i do a refresh when i get impatient i'll do a refresh see if it's picked up the new changes yet the fact that there are new changes so i don't think it has so i'll just go back over here and look and you can see it's still in the midst of the uh pushing the commit and lots of files it takes some time it's not that is that the it's not that I'm pushing lots of files it's that my blog over the years my, my uh, repo for this site has just really grown uh, so very large uh, with the whole history of the site going back many years that every blog push now is uh, sizable so I might rebase it right rebasing it is uh, kind of almost like starting a new repo from scratch using the current status and now we can follow along on the build and deployment you can literally follow along so there's this lovely flow chart right it's beautifully done but you can drill in on any one of these and watch what it's doing or watch the build process and I guess we'll do another before and after because this is still here and we'll take that to the uh, this page and we'll take that to this page and you can see that it still has the uh, the line of sight uh, powered robots uh, as the last uh, thing published so I'll leave that going for a little this will be our before and after let my logo show a little our line of sight robots so we'll be looking for a new entry on top of that and the rendering gets pretty long because my site is uh, pretty big. When you're at the bottom of these things, this is a pretty typical technique that web-based uh, log file type systems do. That when they, uh, when you're at the bottom, it will scroll. When you're not at the bottom, it won't scroll. So you can scroll to the bottom and follow along as it does its thing, or you can uh, review stuff it's done so far. Deploy in progress. And it's completed, right? So if we look at the flowchart view, everything on that flowchart is green because it has been done. And we go over here and it's our before and after. Our line of sight powered robots with scalable neural processing possible was my last one. I do a refresh and time dilating galactic nomads slingshotting around outer rim of galactic plane. There it is. It's just a big long story exposing the back and forth with chat. I'm not trying to massage this necessarily into my own uh, creation. I am very much showing, you know, a snapshot of the state of affairs right now. These are the kinds of stories that chat GPT and Bing and now Bard, because by the way, and I guess I'll just wrap this up there, uh, that Bard can produce because as of yesterday, 
I have BARD access and I can do these same experiments uh, with BARD which you're going to see a lot more coming so I'll be able to uh, truly compare and contrast uh, Bing and BARD. So let's just do a quick little benchmark test here before we wrap it up. Uh, what are today's important headlines? Always checking the news and current events is a f wonderful benchmark test for these things. It tells you so much about what's going on uh, behind the scenes. So it's touching it by category. That's really interesting. Full-scale invasion of the Ukraine. Omicron variant. Climate change economy. Okay. Uh, let's say what are the most important uh, scientific developments over the past week. We'll give it a little window. I follow this more than I follow other things like politics, so I'm better at judging how good of a job it's doing watching the news. NASA's DART spacecraft suddenly crashed successfully. NASA's DART spacecraft successfully crashed into an asteroid. I believe that was a long time ago. James Webb Telescope released its first images. This was a long time ago. A study found that a new type of artificial intelligence can outperform human doctors at diagnosing eye disease. Uh, again, but add the dates of these discoveries. So it keeps it in context. It should know that I'm talking about uh, what's immediately above, but I'm asking for something it, it failed to give the first time, which is the dates, because if it gave the dates of those discoveries, it would reveal right away that it was not within the last week. So let me try and catch it in its, um, in its fibbing. So some of these are actually quite new, right? But some are old. So are these within the last week? No. None. Last week has been relatively quiet in terms of scientific discoveries. So uh, why did you show me more than from the last week without qualifying that uh, important uh, deviation, qualifying that important uh, deviation from the request. I apologize for the error. I'm still under development and learning to be uh, informative and comprehensive. I'll try my zoom. Okay. Show me the answers again, but include citations. It can't do that. It has to give the citations. Bing has been giving the citations in very good format. Bing gives citations very well. Yes, Bing does give citations very well. It's one of the few search engines that do this. When you ask Bing a question, it will often provide a list of sources it used to find the answer. This is helpful for people. Bing also has a feature called reference that allows you to find information about specific people. And when you use reference, Bing will show you a list of Wikipedia pages. Why don't you use citations? It is important if uh, chat is ever to replace search because it's still under development 
And it agrees, Bard agrees that citations are important if chat is ever to replace search. Citations help to verify the information, provide context, and it is working on improving its ability to provide citations. In the meanwhile, it is always happy to help you find information you need. If you have any questions about a specific topic, don't hesitate to ask, blah, 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 blah. And we'll try a final click on Google it and see what it says. While ChatGPT is an impressive AI model, it is not, well, Bing using ChatGPT is capable of it. This is very interesting times we live in, ladies and gentlemen, and it is going to be uh, fascinating to watch uh, Bard uh, catch up with Bing and in case you don't know the citations I'm talking about um, we'll hit Bing and this will be my last thing can chat replace search uh. Especially given a strong citation system. What does Bing think? They are two different things. Oh, I love that scroll. But then how do you make it show the whole thing? We look at these, break it out big perhaps. Oh, snooze all and snooze all. So interesting. I think that was for notifications. As for citations, they are an important part of any information system, whether it is chat or search. Citations help verify the information, blah, 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 blah. Can work together. All right. Yeah. So Bing is, is clearly ahead on all those things that turn chat into a uh, viable alternative uh, to search interestingly and ironically enough so i stopped there thanks for joining me hope to see you again soon and follow along in this uh sci-fi like evolution of society and culture in the world with me talk to you soon